Welcome back, everybody. So welcome to this week's energy report or weekend energy report. I'm going to do kind of like I did last week. I actually really liked that format. Hopefully you did too. I'll do one card for the weekend. Happy Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day weekend. Um, happy graduation weekend. I know there's a lot of graduations coming up as well. So we're going to do that one card for the weekend, three cards for the week. And... All right, let's see, we got one card. Oh, that's right, hold on, I'm sorry. We are using Kyle Gray's Angels and Ancestors Oracle Card Deck for this one. And this weekend is for the 11th and 12th. All right, so we need one card for the energy of, oh, we got a jumping card. Oh, interesting, all right. The Earth Guardian. Stay rooted and grounded. So, let's see. Kudos to those people that work with one card deck and know them like inside and out, which is probably what I should do. Ironically, although this is what I was, this is the deck I was certified as a card reader on. This was actually the deck. Um, but I don't know it inside and out well enough to be, to just, you know, come up with stuff. I hope I didn't just ruin your sound there. Yay, fabric moving. All right, so Earth Guardian. Uh, take time to connect deeply with the energy of the Earth so that you can feel supported and make decisions based on strength and integrity. It's important for you to take a grounded approach to your current situation. If you are rushing ahead or making a decision based on a more on your more fearful, fearful responses, you will miss out on the growth you deserve. Take some time to calm down and get grounded before proceeding further. Breathe, relax, and connect with your center. Then consider what to do. It's important to plant seeds that are going to grow into something beautiful rather than turn into a weed that you have to deal with. So, that's interesting. So, if you have any plans to garden this weekend, unless you're in the Northeast and you're going to be dealing with the cold and the rain and the wet like I am, it's a good weekend to garden. Gardening will ground you, playing in the earth grounds you. Because if you don't garden, go outside. It will help to ground you, go for a walk, go someplace safe where you can walk. Because if you're not in a safe environment and you're trying to walk, um, you're still going to be in a, a state of hypervigilance. You're going to be aware, you're going to be looking around. You're not going to ground properly. Breathing deep, going outside. If you have crystals, like you can laugh all you want, but um, not that some of you would laugh. But this, so crystals are earth energy. And yes, they all have their different vibrations. Um, check out the video on grounding crystals. The two videos actually on grounding crystals, the common ones and lesser known ones. Because these will also help you to stay grounded if for whatever reason you can't get outside or you can't, you have mobility issues, or maybe you live in an area, like you live in a city where it's not feasible, or it's wet and it's cold and it's disgusting, and maybe you don't want to go out, or you, you know, you can't get out. Also, with Mother's Day, um, if, you know, maybe you won't be able to because you're really busy seeing your kids. If you have someone that is no longer here, a mother, a grandmother, an aunt, a child, wander around the cemetery. Cemeteries are great places. I <laughs> I spend too much time at them myself, probably. But they're they're good places to kind of go and try to ground. I've often wondered if if sometimes because there's all the bones and all that other energy, if sometimes it does make it harder to ground in a cemetery. But stop and visit, pay a visit to family. But find a way to ground yourself for the weekend and stay grounded. And try. And once you are grounded, try to look at things as logically as you can. Because once you kind of pull those emotions out of it or you are able to kind of calm down and step back and look at things from a more grounded, clearer-headed aspect, it helps everything fall into place. So that's for your weekend. All right, now three cards for the week. What do we got? 
da, da, da. so this is for the week of the what did i say i did it again ladies and gentlemen i filmed a whole thing and the camera wasn't on so it's the 13th to the 17th that's okay because i think i needed that reading for myself <laughs> this is for you all right so three cards for our week it'll be really funny if actually if any of those same cards come up um i'll be very curious to see how this goes all right the trader exchange energy to create abundance so this is this is exactly i think what it talks about it's just that energy exchange between people allowing yourself to be open to energy make connections and exchange information talents or support uh, the universe operates under the law of cause and effect and is always looking to return to a natural state of balance so if you are lacking in feelings of abundance at this time you are being invited to share your time your gifts and your understanding with others if you're frustrated because something isn't unfolding in your life instead of asking yourself what you can get ask yourself what you can give the exchange of energy doesn't necessarily mean financial energy. It can also be about, uh, in it can also be about supporting in order to feel supported. If you've been holding back with your offerings, now is the time to change that. Allow yourself to be open, honest, and vulnerable. This can prepare you to open up to even greater opportunities in coming days, weeks, and months. So the idea is here is. Basically, it can be a financial trade. It can be a trade in skills, time, energy. Um, so it's, you know, going out and seeing people, don't, volunteering perhaps. Um, could, there's a lot of different ways this could go. So also, the one thing it doesn't say, but was a message I got yesterday if you are someone that tends to be the one that always gives so this is talking about someone who's always kind of taking or looking what they can get and how you know but if you are that person that is always giving you also have to be open to allowing which is very difficult very difficult to do for a lot of people so if you're that one that's always giving 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 of time giving of energy giving of whatever it is you also have to be allowing all of that back in you have to allow the good you give out to come back to you which is very hard to do <laughs> especially if you tend to be a people pleaser or you want to just make people you know you want to avoid conflict or avoid confrontation oh interesting shapeshifter transform and unveil your gifts so this is if you are a shamanic practitioner this is a great card that maybe you need to practice journeying a bit more um i also know i don't i believe in the druidic tradition there is also a belief that the um druids could shape shift into their animal protectors as well so could be something in that message take your time and focus on developing your gifts and strengths uh, you may have been through many challenges and lows but you are now in a space of transformation you are moving beyond your past challenges and hoping and honing your current strengths there are opportunities for you to discover and rediscover the gifts and talents that you were born with and born to share all of your past experiences have only helped you to see how strong you really are remember that you are stronger than you realize you are an amazing soul as you are uh, who can transform in ways that people least expect you have many talents that you share that you will share in your lifetime you are guided to stay focused on the light knowing that it will guide you forward when this card arrives there's an opportunity for you to tap into the power of your spirit animal note if you're seeing a particular animal regularly it's because its medicine is coming to you um, so th I feel like that's really self-explanatory I think sometimes as we children know what they're good at and sometimes there are just certain things they gravitate toward that they really enjoy as an adult life will sometimes push you away from that 
So this is the time to go back and revisit those skills. Also, yes, pay attention if you have been running across a lot of a certain animal. If you keep seeing hawks or if you keep seeing cardinals. Um, cardinals are not only a symbol from the dead to let you know that they are around, they also carry their own energy uh, as well, which you can try and look up. You can also, some might say, do a meditation or a shamanic journey to see what that energy is. Depends on your relationship with your guides. Um, for a long time, I think my guides realized that if they sent certain things my way when I was paying attention virtually, I would actually pick up on it and see the messages. So they will do that from time to time. So I'll know if like sometimes the first thing that pops up or the, where my eye is drawn, that's the message I'm supposed to get. The rest of it might just be all a bunch of fluff. So if you have that kind of relationships with your guides, then you will innately know. If you don't, try a meditation, try a shamanic journey. Um, there is actually, I will post it here. There is, I did one a while ago for how to find out your spirit animal. So if you're not sure what your spirit animal is, I will post that here somewhere and feel free to, you know, sit down and meet your spirit animal. All right. God number three. <laughs> So this is one of the cards. This is actually one of the cards that I did previously. Ironic. All right, so it's autumn. Release the old and rest. Okay, this one is actually at the end, so I will make sure I give you all the information. So this is a card to release all of the pressure and expectation weighing you down. Shed it so you can recover before moving into a time of renewal. So this is essentially a time for you, whether it's just this week or maybe the next couple of weeks, to just relax and try and work through some of those old patterns. I tried to see if we were coming up on a, a waning moon, but I couldn't figure that out because usually waning moons are really good for releasing stuff. Uh, you know what is heavy and what is holding you back. Is it a person, a situation, a dream? Like the tree is letting go of their leaves and fruit in autumn, it's time to let go. When you hold on, you try to control reality and that never works. When you let go, you make space for the new to enter your life. You are being guided by your angels and nature herself to release whatever is stopping you from moving forward. And you can do this. When the autumn card arrives in the future position of a spread or as the last card in a reading, can also indicate that the coming autumn will usher, usher in important energies with regards to your question or intentions. So this is a card about letting go, stepping back, letting go, and releasing that which no longer serves you, if you can. Sometimes it takes a lot of introspection to do that, which might be something you do over this week and the coming weeks. It may also be that in the actual autumn, you'll find a lot of transition coming. Um, so that's something also to bear in mind. All right. So just to recap, we have the trader. Exchange energy to create abundance. We have the shapeshifter. Transform and unveil your gifts. And we have autumn. Release the old and rest. So hopefully you'll have a semi-restful week. All right. Well, we're done here. I'll see you again next week. Bye.